you give him a bigger round of applause? Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm not doing my keynote because we want to keep to our time and also get to utilize Mr. Thyagarajan's presence to the maximum. Uh, this is the 24th year of Exchange for Media. This is the 21st year of Pitch. Uh, we've been doing the Pitch CMO Summit for 18 years. This used to be called the Pitch Brainstorm in the initial days. And um, it's growing from strength to strength. Marketing is business and business is marketing. Uh, brands are the core of connecting with consumers. And our theme today is customer centricity. What are we doing to be able to be customer centric? Uh, what are we doing to be able to endear ourselves as brands to our consumers, to our customer? And we couldn't have had a better person than Mr. Thyagarajan to be able to do this conversation. Uh, today, uh, the brands or businesses, I shouldn't be calling them businesses, but institutions that are connecting with their TGs, I would say politicians are among the topmost. They know how to set the narratives. They know how to be experiential with their audiences. They know how to look at data, and that's what makes them customer-centric. Also, uh, will we be able to be learn from political parties, politicians, leaders? We can learn from anyone. Also, what is happening is the aspirations in India are growing, but does it really mean uh, that the way brands engage with the current audiences, current TG, and prospective audience has seen some change using technology. Uh, also, what is happening in the macro environment? So let me start by asking Mr. Thyagarajan to make his opening comments, and then I'll ask him questions. Mr. Thyagarajan, what's changed since the last summer? This is peak season for you. This is festival time for you. Uh, you're in the air conditioning business. And because of the way you interact with all the industries, all the sectors, they're also your customers. You have a understanding of what's happening in the at a macro level. So give us some macros uh, which are currently in the play as we speak. Uh, good morning, Dr. Batra. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me. Uh, congratulations to Exchange for Media Group. And uh, congratulations also on the occasion of the latest uh, Pitch Madison report. Um, it has kept its place. There, there is no uh, single document where you can get everything about uh, ADEX and um, in a very bold manner also forecasting what it is and to be reviewing it at the end of the year. Uh, so compliments to Madison team, compliments to your team. And uh, this, uh, this you said that a bright mind, no, there are many bright minds here. Throughout the day, you will see, and I won't be there in the evening, and I, I know how hot it becomes in the evening. Uh, the big change uh, in the marketplace, I think, is not only for Blue Star, for many others, is uh, the growth is driven by aspirational middle class. Um, the, there, there are reports that premium products are gaining traction, but that is that is uh, in a small uh, percentage, the, the base of that is, uh, that is small and you are seeing that. But otherwise, I think uh, the, the future is going to be driven by middle class. Future growth uh, is going to come from tier three, four, five. Bottom towns. of the pyramid. That's right. Uh, third is, uh, I think it is, uh, it, it, India is a very large uh, market and uh, very complex market. Uh, you can't have one uh, single strategy to drive. And according to me, marketing a product, uh, even in the United States, may be a simpler com one compared with marketing in India. It may be expensive there, but it is. Um, the uh, the it requires a different marketing mix, and uh, I I think uh, much uh, you know we 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 grew with the concept of four P's of marketing. Uh, I think there is uh, there is uh, there are uh, there must be a correction. You, you can't quarrel with uh, Philip Kotler for that, but but uh, I think D comes in four P's plus a D. Even in P, I have something else which I will tell you. That, that also has undergone a change in terms of uh, distribution. And D is data. 
Correct. Absolutely. I, I, I think it is driven by that. And Mr. Thagrajan, when we were preparing for the session, you were telling Satya Prabhakar, uh, I don't know where Satya, that you know, uh, Satya is here, uh, the founder of Suleka, he is now doing a new marketing services company. Uh, you talked about how a store in a certain location is very different than a store, a retail store for your business or someone's business. And you need to understand the customer in that particular store. So a customer in a store in Hyderabad is different than a customer in a store in Meerut. And you were saying they, that's where the data comes into play. Give us a story from your own business where you've seen this happening. Yeah, so I, I should I should uh, I should not be mistaken that I am uh, I am sounding arrogant. Also, the the my uh, my complaint has been uh, that the marketeers uh, are predominantly located in or the CMOs are located in uh, Mumbai or Delhi, Delhi. and uh, most of them I don't think they are they are traveling to the smaller. Uh, markets, tier three, four, five towns. Um, I, 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 I think it, uh, the world has dramatically changed. Like in Blue Star, uh, so our Daikin, you can check with the LG, 65% of the sale is coming from tier three, four, five markets. And uh, there, there are big changes, like more than 50% the air conditioners are bought through consumer finance. And more than 90% are first-time buyers and who are buying entry-level products. And uh, I, I, I think uh, we need much more data and much more connect. So this is one part of it, understanding that uh, consumer. And um, this, is a, this is an exciting period, uh, the, for, especially for air conditioning companies. And so will be certain FMCG products like ice creams, for example, that uh, we, we deal with ice cream companies. They are excited about the summer season. They are preparing for, and in their case, with the elections, ice cream consumption also will be high. Cold drinks, ice cream. I, ice cream, cold drinks, one more thing. Correct. And uh, ice cream indirectly benefits us. That's other context. Now, um, in, the, in, this, in this exciting period, um, we, we, I call it like a Diwali for cooling companies or Diwali for ice cream companies. Uh, while many of us, will, you know, there, there are multiple things happen, like it is a summer vacation and uh, people go on vacation holidays to different places. Uh, some summer related big movies also get released, uh, both in connected TV and in Bollywood uh, and other regions. Uh, IPL, the election, many things are happening. And uh, so in this big event, um, any big event, uh, competitiveness goes up. That, that's why when it is a World Cup, all teams, even Afghanistan will raise their level. So here you can see we can uh, all the brands will raise their level in terms of advertising, in terms of new products, in terms of distribution, and in terms of communication, fresh communication for the season. Quite rightly, and and in that intense competitive environment, uh, you have to play. So if uh, Virat is preparing for uh, Blue Star, he is preparing for the battle, and Daikin is here. Daikin will prepare for LG. Will prepare for all. Now, uh, here it is not only communication, uh, it is about the relationship and the customer centricity as a subject uh, comes from what? That I, I should know what the customer uh, needs and uh, we have flopped many times with the products uh, and features which the customer was not uh, expecting at all, you build it. And uh, that, that need from those markets will have to come through extensive research. I am not very sure that uh, the spendings uh, on research uh, is good enough uh, by the industry at all. You are doing some focus group discussions and all that. You, you need to be much more micro in that. So the micro marketing is very important. And uh, equally important is the fact that the relationship, relationship with even your channel partners. 
and you should be knowing uh, each one of them and in, in including the data that comes like uh, what I was telling there is I should be able to track uh, in uh, Musafar Nagar in a particular showroom what is that sale and what is my share out of that or some Manargudi in Tamil Nadu or Belgaum somewhere all places I should be able to track it real time that data is important today. I do not think that just by advertising in some IPL I am going to get my sale going. And we know the other summit, last year in, uh, in the same summit we discussed, the, the ad expend itself, what percentage is being spent on creating brands and how much is for tactical or performance marketing. There is a big skew that uh, you, you, you look at the ads, how many are and or how many new brands have got created. We are reaping out of something that has been created long ago. Mr. Thakran, at this point, let me ask you, if you're customer centric, you know your data, you know your consumer, you know the micro trends, do you think being customer centric in a price conscious market, because whether it's air conditioning, whether it's any product category, the Indian consumer, especially at the entry level and in, in you know, non-metro is very price sensitive. Do you think being customer centric can get more money from an Indian consumer? Can you charge more? Can you increase your margins? Or that doesn't happen? There are two benefits. If I am customer centric, I know what price he is expecting. So therefore, you are able to develop a product at that particular price point. And uh, depending on the region today, uh, depending on the customer segment, uh, your, your business case for developing a product, you need that data. So if you are only customer centric, you will know at what price point I am supposed to be developing a product, what feature I am supposed to be. Like, like for example, I'll tell you in a deep freezer, uh, I am sorry for bringing in Blue Star. Um, the, the customer attaches value for a number of things. Uh, aesthetics of a chest freezer, baskets inside, cooling efficiency. If the power goes, how long the ice cream will not melt. There is a cost wheel for movement of that particular one. There is handle. Number of things are there. Now, in, in a data science, you will try to understand what is the value he is attaching for what. Now, we used to be thinking that uh, the aesthetics is very important. We used to be spending a hell of a lot of money on that aspect, but forget about the reliability of those wheels, which has to last for him four or five years. Actually, he expects you to put more money and make that wheel much but, uh, more robust. Or he is worried about the handle because every day some 200 times he is opening and closing. That led to you design a deep freezer without a handle in the sense that it is inbuilt there as a part of the lid. So this insight will come only by being customer centric. You have to understand he has got a cone inside, he has got a brick, he has got a cup and what are those sizes that are coming for various ice cream brands. Therefore, how I have to design the basket that is a customer insight comes through customer centricity. Now the problem is that when, uh, see Indian market is now, it is driven by scale, uh, un, un, unimagined scale, like uh, huge numbers are happening. Two, it is happening due, uh, with the digital, so there is a smart aspect. It is happening with the sustainability angle. In this complex world, you need to collect massive amount of data. So if you have now got at what price point he wants, now I know his mind, then I will be able to price it in such a manner to make more profits. Otherwise, I will be losing money. Beautiful. Now, one of the points you said, you know, FMCG companies, consumer durables companies, a lot of CMOs started in sales. I went to a business school. 30 years back, a lot of my batchmates started in sales and some have become CEOs and some of them are entrepreneurs. You made this point that CMOs don't spend enough time in market, especially they may have spent it in their initial years, but as their 
go up the ladder and they become, you know, CXOs, CMOs, the amount of time they spend in terms of observing it first and making market visits, going to, you know, hinterland, so to say, going to the, some of the cities you mentioned. Uh, do you think uh, a combination of looking at the data of sales, point of sales, looking at category data, and also these visits, a combination of it can lead to consumer insights, which can lead to new products, can lead to new features, can lead to new pricing, can lead to new way of communicating. Do you think uh, that is the need of the hour? Well, entirely agree with you, but equally I'm saying I should not generalize. Uh, say, say, for example, Suresh Narayan. He spends a lot of time in, there will be many exceptions there, where even CEOs spend time there. Uh, the, the, uh, the importance of spending time, that is, that is one part of it. If you are spending time, what is that you are able to grasp? How that data can be collated? and a 360 degree view of the market. Now, that can come, uh, that can come only through a data science. I, they, there is Swaminathan here, he is a master. I, I should not be lecturing, many of them will be here. So the, uh, the thing is, it is increasingly clear that you need real-time data on consumer insights across. Now, you look at the other thing which has changed, that I, that's what I was telling Girish. Uh, the, you know, some point of a time, YouTube became a search engine. Like, you can go to Google and do that, you can go to YouTube and do that. Equally, it is competing in that space. Now, uh, e-commerce is invariably used to, in any, any purchase, e-commerce, people are going and searching and understanding that and before coming to, it is a very important element. Now you should be, you should be, you, a particular category may not sell significantly in e-commerce, but still e-commerce is important. And we don't know what ONDC will... Search, search online, buy Correct. offline, so at least comparison so, of the features, price, happens online, so it's very important. Yeah, Philip Kotler model will not include this. <laughs> okay, I am, he is a guru, but still, what I'm saying is it has changed since then. And uh, so the, whatever you get, and how do you, that, physically it is impossible. In, in a huge country like this, you can't be spending every day in the market, but uh, it is going to come through a data warehouse and analytics and artificial intelligence. It is here. And if you miss the bus, you are going to miss the market share. Now we are in the IPL season, we are in the election season. There are two biggest events that can happen in any year. And they are both happening in the next two months. Uh, you talked in your opening comments about the fact that, you know, one has to be smart and intelligent uh, and differentiated in the way you spend your marketing money. Girish's hair, your new commercial, we'll see that. But uh, do you think uh, IPL is overpriced with the amount of, I mean, it is out of reach for some people. And with the two brands coming together, I'm not taking the name of the brands so that nobody can legally sue me. Well, not that I'm worried, I have lots of lawyer friends. Uh, the prices will only go up because if they have to recover their money in the next five years, all the marketers in this room will have to pay two, three times. Whether there is ROI or not, that's a separate question, okay? So, do you think it's smart to spend, I know you have a new commercial, for you it's summertime, you said it's Diwali time, so to say. But do you think IPL is becoming out of the reach of a lot of brands? The pricing is really, really out of whack in my view. Uh, I, I, I don't think so, Dr. Batra. I, I, I think it will double within another three years, same IPL. Uh, if you compare with international standards, say India is still cheaper in terms of marketing costs. That, that's, that's not the real issue. The issue is connected with the fragmentation of IPL uh, or the reach through IPL. Uh, there is uh, standard definition, high definition, connected TV, digital. Uh, and uh, what do you do with this? Uh, you, you cannot address this country with just uh, one. And uh, we, we do some calculations and take a bet. Uh, 
so therefore, I, I am not so much worried about the cost, and I am certain this cost will go up. Of course, it will. And, uh, it'll it'll double, and uh, but but the fragmentation again. Uh, fine, the data science there has improved. So much of data is available in order to measure and uh, and understand where you have to put your money. Um, the the concern I will have will be our assumption that all are sitting and watching our ad fully. Uh, I am not very sure. Uh, the attention span of today's consumer, uh, how do you capture? And do you, unless and until you have got some 2,000 crores to be going on bombarding it. Okay. Now, there are many CMOs in the room, some I know, some I have met for the first time, business leaders, you know. What is your advice to CMOs if they want to become CEOs? Uh, the CMO tenure used to be 60 months. A couple of years back, it came down to 48 months. Now, the average CMO tenure is between 36 to 38 months, depending on whatever data you want to look at. So, how do you think CMOs can rise to the role of a CEO? What are your what is your advice to them beyond traveling to, to Meerut and Muzaffar Nagar? Uh, in uh, in, uh, in uh, all forums, uh, I, I keep saying that one will have to continuous, continue to learn and upgrade. That, that is the first part of it. Uh, but most importantly, I, I think uh, it, is the, it is the connect with the customer. It, the, it, it, links back to the customer centricity. The successful CEOs are the ones who are connected more to the customers at the end of the day. You may think they are a blue-eyed boy of somebody and connected well to the board or the chairman. Uh, I think eventually the bottom line will be who is connected to the customer. And in India, the, that's the other point that I mentioned that even with the channels, uh, I don't think uh, your clinical relationship is going to be, it, it is very important that much beyond transaction clinical relationship, you have to develop that relationship with the channel partners. As with the well. ecosystem, yeah. yeah. My last question before I bring in the audience for two, three questions is, um, let me take the example of drones. Let me take the example of space tech. The government is not a policy creator but it's also a market maker. For example, the government said you make drones, we'll buy 8,000 crores of drones. During uh, Corona, when the vaccines came, the government roped players like yours and other players to be able to build the supply chain from a, you know, refrigeration so that the vaccines are in the right form when they reach the end use. So how do you think uh, the government can play the role of a market maker over the next few months. It's spending in infrastructure, that's one way to be, uh, be a market maker, uh, look at the amount of infrastructure projects. Though there is also a theory, whenever there are elections, more infrastructure projects come in. I leave why, what I'm trying to say to everyone's imagination, and I'm sure. Uh, so the, uh, the, the perception of government uh, will have to change much more. It is changing, it has to Look, uh, more than 3.5 lakh crore of transaction in the GEM portal. Uh, it will be a very leading digital commerce, uh, e-commerce uh, platform. Uh, it, uh, it, has, it is breaking record every month, the number of transactions that are taking place. But still, it is not seen as uh, Amazon, Flipkart and all, nowhere near the transactions that are happening there. Um, but, but the, the government uh, has played, uh, I, I can tell you from the point of view of uh, air conditioning industry. Uh, PLI, one can say there were criticisms that you are going and uh, industry has to fund for themselves. Why are you going and giving some kind of funding like this, which is viability gap or something like this. But the government, uh, through DPIIT made the Indian air conditioning industry realize this, that you are all importing more than 50% from China. India is the fastest growing market with India's penetration at some 7-8%. It is going to grow by 2040 to 45, most probably definitely by 2047. 
uh, India will overtake China in terms of market size. If that is so, why you should not think big? So I think what they taught us was to think big, that you can be a global player in air conditioning industry. And uh, that change is, is, I take it as a market maker. Uh, Absolutely. It, it was not thought about by the industry. Industry was still hesitating. Focus them. Uh, because, uh, you know, the, the margin, you see, all of a sudden then, uh, India, uh, the profit margins are lower compared with many international markets. Cost of capital is high. You can, uh, summer is happening, rain is happening, which I call it like a Satyajit Ray movie. We were going through this tragedy all along. To tell us that, look, you should come out of this, you can be, quite often very aggressively. Uh, that is a big benefit Change. like a market maker. So today, uh, Indian industry can say proudly that we can make products equivalent to that of uh, anyone else in the world. We can supply products to Europe and uh, US, and we can lead uh, the, the sustainability movement, where global warming or uh, anything. Thank you, Mr. Tyagrajan. You're absolutely right. One thing I've seen, because of the policies of this government, because of the successes of Indian entrepreneur, the ambition of an Indian entrepreneur at every scale, whether a first time, you know, mid-sized entrepreneur uh, to an existing large enterprise, the ambition of the Indian entrepreneur in the last three, four years has become bigger and bigger, and he or she is trying to make a mark globally. Um, Please give Mr. Thyagarajan a big round of applause and uh, we can take one or two questions. Uh, you can think of your questions, but I want to ask my team to play the Blue Star AV and I'll get out of the way so that I can also watch it because I have not watched it and you all can watch it. Uh, and we can have one or two questions from Mr. Thyagarajan. Can we get the Blue Star AV uh, played? Garmi. Aapkaan? Myself, Garmi. Himself. Bhayankar Ghan. Oh! Myself Virat, himself Blue Star, Heavy Duty. Blue Star Heavy Duty is Bhayankar Garmi Ke Chuti. Garmi. Fast cooling inverter AC. Ab garmi ke chutti. Garmi. Kaise laga jaane man? I love it. Aap kaun? Mr. and Mrs. Garmi. Hum garmi ke chutti. Yaha manayegi. Oh, arre aye, baithiye, baithiye. Kuch thanda lenge? Why not? Blue Star Fast Cooling Inverter AC. Ab garmi ke chutti. Thank you. Well done, Girish and Mr. Thyagrajan. Uh, we have we have another three four minutes before we let Mr. Thyagrajan go, go. Any questions for Mr. Thyagrajan? Hey. Yes. Can we get him a mic? Good morning, sir. I just met you. I'm from your competitor. I can't Thank hear. You. <laughs> yeah. I. Can you hear me now, sir? I think speakers are facing this way. Yeah. I'll come closer to you. <laughs> he, he's from Daiki, my competitor. Yeah. So uh, my question is on a larger level. Uh, since there is a lot of innovation, artificial intelligence, uh, things happening, and. Uh, a uh, lot of uh, technology changing a lot of industries. So do you see the disruption in terms of new players or technology changing the air conditioning industries in the next couple of years? Most certainly, I suppose. And uh, if you are talking about within the product, I, I think in first to begin with from the commercial spaces. In the residential, still Indian market will look for entry-level products. 
I don't think they can afford that. Like uh, we have found, uh, when you say it is Wi-Fi, we don't have homes which keep the Wi-Fi on 24 hours, right? When we leave, we may switch off and come. So I don't think residential, but commercial space definitely yes. Okay. But in terms of artificial intelligence, the kind of consumer, uh, you know, personalization, the other things. So, so any technology company coming and really taking the consumer. So there are, there are uh, already I see quite a few experts here. Yeah. In, in marketing, sales, distribution, uh, many models are already implemented. I, I think FMCG has taken a lead. Some consumer durables would have done it. Uh, air conditioning industry is generally slow. I, I think we have to move faster. Thank you. Thank you.